Hello everyone, welcome to World Writing in the Time of Corona. Today's very different, day 308, would you believe? And we're going to look at a Spanish form of poem called the Glosa, which is a bit like a golden shovel poem, um, but this time instead of just taking one line, you take four lines from a given poem and you use those um, in the poem. The four lines um, form the final line of a 10 line stanza. So you have four 10 line verses and you, you're given the, if you like, you've given or you've chosen the last line of each. Now, I, I had to have quite a long look for the sort of four lines I'd like to use because obviously um, the length of the lines, the subject of the lines, all these kind of make a difference to how you write it. And so I went through a lot of poems um, and um, finally found one by um, a Russian writer called Nikolai uh, Gumilyov. Um, and the poem is called Modernity and he wrote it in 1912. I'll just read you the first four lines. So this is, this is how I started. I found my four lines. So these are them. I closed the Iliad and sat by the window. A last word trembled on my lips. Something shone brightly, a street lamp or the moon, and the shadow of a watchman slowly moved. So once I had that, I knew that I had to um, get to each line, and I had 10 lines to get to those. So this really was quite a challenge in that it uh, I needed to, I felt the choice I'd made meant I needed to construct a story. And so this is the longest poem I think I've written since we've been doing the workshops. And um, I hope you enjoy it. It is rather long, so I'm just warning you. It takes takes about probably about four minutes. So it's quite a long poem. Um, and I don't pretend it's any good, but it was quite an interesting way of working. And it did um, make me focus on trying to be more descriptive in order to get to the line. Um, if you have a go yourself, you'll see what I mean. But um, ha have a look anyway. So this is my attempt at a glosa based on four lines from um, Nikolai Gumilyov's Modernity. Okay, so you'll hear those four lines that I read to you just now. It had been one of those long days of rain, of a relentless longing for a love long gone. I remembered his eyes, their burning hazel centres, how tears would cluster on his elegant coal black lashes. We talk of how his family never understood him, some things too dark and deep for merchants like them to know. Among our deep embraces, we'd lose each other and the world. But we both knew our love was doomed in unknown stars and laws. On such a desperate evening, I tried to read. No joy. I closed the Iliad and sat by the window. He was my Theseus. Black sails were in my sunset, a carelessness, a moment's madness, then it all ripped apart. That late October evening, his carriage brought him to my door and he, rushing up the stairs, the housemaid being nowhere near, forgot to lock or even shut the door to my high lodgings. I remember the pigeon pie he'd brought, the porter and the fire crackling. How we sat together laughing, writhed like friendly serpents when his light-footed, violent father burst into the room, dragged my beautiful love out like a shot-down deer. A last word trembled on my lips. I've only had a letter since postmarked from Bermuda. His moneyed family had him spirited away, no doubt to exile, to avoid the scandal that festers in times like these around a son and heir. He told me of the mountains, of the long days and longer nights, how he was being made to marry, how the woman seemed both vain and dull. He'd write to me no more. Such love as ours was only fit to dream of. 
Pulling the heavy curtains, I press my face up to the crying glass. Rain lashed down with wraiths of mist. Looking up, perhaps in hope, something shone brightly. A street lamp or the moon. For those dark hours, I considered the best course I could take. He was beyond my reach, beyond the ocean and my hopes. At the stroke of midnight, I stood, convincing myself another sign would come. That crescent moon told me my fortune may be on the wane for now. For as winter comes, firm hopes are hard to find. Another sign would come. And so I peered into the street below. The rain had gone. The air, now clear, seemed to sharpen. In all that little street, I saw no sign of any living thing. Death or sleep was on the world. But then I heard a carriage stop and a shadow of a watchman slowly moved. That's my closer. I haven't got a title for it yet, but um, I kind of quite like the story and the intrigue um, and uh, quite a challenge to write about a different time and a very different sort of relationship. So I hope you've enjoyed it um, and um, I appreciate your comments and do have a go if you're feeling uh, feeling you've got time you've got the time to do one because it certainly is a, is quite a challenge it's taken me quite a, quite a while to come up with that so i hope you've enjoyed it so that's today's glossa from while writing the time of corona and um i'll see you again in a few days until then you take care and uh look after yourselves bye 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 for now